Welcome to the Red Half of Sheffield preview pod where we again will preview another probably probably hammering um, this time at the feet of Aston Villa. I am joined from the Up the Villa podcast. Luke, how are you doing off of the back? I mean, what, less than an hour ago, we just <laughs> finished up what we were talking pre-recording. It was a cagey affair against Brentford, so I mean... That that's our first question. Get into uh, today's res- result. Yeah, but but see, mate. To be fair, I mean, we've had this little bit of a stigma around uh, away forms not that great. It's it's okay. The away form's been fine. Um, so to get the away win at the G Tech is massive. A place where we don't really get the win against Brentford normally. So he's sort of got that sort of one off our back now. So. Yeah, it's just amazing, you know, as fans, we just want to keep the momentum going and keep winning football matches to try and get in the top four and just see where we can go, really. But, you know, it showed great character to come back from 1-0 down and and get the victory, score two goals in the second half. So, you know, really, really pleased with it, really. Yeah, um, I know I certainly had it on and it was there's a fair few bust ups. Brentford had one sent off. You guys had one sent off towards the end of the game. Unai Emery got a yellow card. I guess I'll, I'll ask you this next question. Is this your start to the season? Villa's start to the season. Does it come to you as a bit of a shock or was this kind of Unai Emery, when he took over and started getting Villa playing the right way, you know, they started to ascend the table last year. Did you think you guys would be this high in the league coming into the festive period? Um, No, and I'm quite a positive Villa fan, so I would... Uh, my aspirations going into it were to get sixth place, to qualify for Europe again, to get Villa cons- consistently getting sort of in the European places, to get in that conversation. I think we all saw last season how good Emery was to be able to get us from virtually the relegation zone to seventh and get European football. He improved every single player at Villa from November to the end of last season. So, Veeam, and to watch him do that, it gave us a lot of sort of like positivity, a lot of belief. And we knew we were going to be, you know, in and around sixth place. But what we're doing at the minute, you know, the style has improved from last season. We, you know, unbeaten at home, 15 Premier League victories in a row at Villa Park. Now that's, I mean, some massive feat. I mean, we went back to last week and that was probably the best week I've ever had at Sporting Villa in my life. You know, to go and beat Man City and we absolutely destroyed them. You know, yeah. it wasn't like Man City were bad and we were, you know, we, we we took them apart. And then to back it up the next game, you know, it was a different type of game to beat Arsenal, you know, and win, you know, not playing that great. Yeah. It's absolutely massive and... That's what good teams do. That that they, they find a way to win, and we saw against Brentford that I didn't think first half we were that great, but you know we found another way to win, and and we got that win, and yeah, we we're just doing really really well. And I think when you look at the Premier League and you hear about like Newcastle's injuries, you hear about Spurs, no one mentions our injuries. You know, at the start of the season we had Buendia out with an ACL. Ming's out with an ACL, Ramsey wasn't playing, Moreno wasn't playing, you know, and, and those are four players that played virtually every game under Emery last season. They've hardly featured. So I think what Emery's done with the players that we've got has been like amazing. Oh yeah. I mean it's it's certainly changed the trajectory, as you mentioned, when he took over, you guys were near the bottom or bottom of the table and just went on this run and qualified for Europe and now set in the world light. I mean, it, it it's, it's insane. And it, it's, it's cool to see such a, a historic club that, yeah, probably for a little bit had fallen on some tough times. We're down in the championship. Once you got promoted, then, you know, the ghost goal, I'll never forget. I'll never forget that ghost goal. The first game back from COVID <laughs> <laughs> man, you guys should have been down. Golly, we this. saved you. Oh, man, that ghost goal <laughs> saved you guys. Um, and, and honestly, I'm going to hit on that. That goal that doesn't go in 
if it does count, Villa's probably not in this position. Fair to say, right? Because they, if you, if you, take, yeah, if you uh, take that, yeah. if you take that result and say United wins coming out of that that break for COVID, that's the. If you guys don't get a point from that game, that's you guys. I believe that you're stable by one point. If you don't get that, you go down, and that changes probably everything, right? And we're we're not even talking about you guys in this situation. Yeah, I mean, I know that that goal sort of gets branded around by a lot of football fans, but I think you know it, it's a moment, isn't it? Who who knows what could have happened in sort of like second half? Do you know what I yeah. mean? But <clears throat> yeah, I mean, whoever didn't switch that on is like a genius. So. Yeah, I know, right. <laughs> I know that's uh, <laughs> man. I still remember watching that. And I'm like, <laughs> the dude's laying. How in the hell? The dude's laying in. The keeper's laying in the goal with the ball in his hand over the line. And I'm like, all right, what, whatever. Um, so back to Friday night football. Uh, who are the ones to watch for Villa that are going to probably inevitably light us up like a Christmas tree? I don't. I don't. I think it's it's difficult to pick one player because. Of how of how we actually play and what we do and you know but I think one of our biggest players is Pau Torres our centre back playing out from the back you know he, he's absolutely crucial to us you know the balls into midfield um, cutting through midfields he, he's brilliant um, Watkins on fire uh, McGinn's absolutely unreal at the minute Douglas Louise who missed the game against Brentford because he was suspended he's you know, probably one of the best central midfielders in the Premier League at the minute. Um, so we've got a lot of players. We we sort of like, we're a team. And I think we're not a team of like individuals. There's not one player that you sort of say, sort him out and you'll be fine. It's, you know, everybody's so sort of like in tune with, with what they want to be doing tactically. So I think it's just the way we play. And I think probably whenever someone asks me this, I probably should say the manager because yeah. of, of of how he sets us up per game. He, he looks at the individual teams that we're coming up against and we adapt to who we're playing. We don't sort of just play the same way every week. And, and I think Emery's probably key to the game, basically, of, of what what he's got planned. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he is certainly – he's probably one of the – would you – be fair to say one of the best in-game managers mm. in the league right now. I mean, there's not many that come to the top of my head when I think of who can make a team change up either their formation or do something different to take advantage of the opponent. And I mean, Una Emery, he got treated unfairly the last time he was in this league. And now, you know, he goes away from it, comes back and it's just like, Man, it's just revolutionary. Um, all right, let's get to Friday. So give me a score prediction. What is it? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten nil. Um, because I know we ain't gonna have a sniff at the goal. No. Um go ahead, go ahead and give us your score predictions and, and what do you think happens Friday night? Um I say this about every team, like every team holds their own right in a game and, and every game that you're playing in the Premier League is difficult. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter who you're playing, you know. Um I you know I've got a back us. I think I think we win the game. Uh, yeah. you know we we've won 15 in a row. So mm -hmm. I, I'd back us to win. But I think Wald is a is he's a he's a tough manager, isn't he? You know, he he gets you, he'll get you competitive, he'll get you organized and you know, in, in football, anything can happen, can't it? Do I worry about Cameron Archer? Probably. Could he sort of do something against us, having we've sold him to you guys? So, well, I think you know, he's not all... alone. I think he's not playing Friday because he it it's not a it wasn't a permanent deal, wasn't it? It was a loan to buy. Yeah, I think, you bought, up. No, I think you bought. I'm sure you bought him. Oh, so you no, bought I him for a fee. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> But I think we can. I think I think there's something in there that if you get relegated, we yeah. have to buy him back. I, I think there's something like that in there. Yeah, that's so he, he he can't he can't play. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it'll be it'll be a tough game. And I did watch you against uh, Chelsea. I thought you were okayish. I thought you were, I thought you were you were okay. Um, 
But yeah, I've got a back Villa to win. I'd say 3 1. 3 1 Villa. Hell, we're not even going to have a shot. Um, we'll have one shot on target. I think if we get stuffed 5 0, that's it. Um, I think it's over before halftime. I think it's three, four nil before half. And it's just because it, it, it's going to, you know, we'll, we'll hang on and maybe that's rash, but it, it, you know, the, the new manager bounce, this United team is a, is a championship, a bottom half championship team right now at best. Um, so we're just going to get, we're going to get stuffed from here on out there. The wilder new manager bounce, it wore off. You could see we didn't even have, we went back to the same, the, the same tactics, yesterday against Chelsea where we just got we didn't even we had one one chance we had one sniff one shot on target and that was it for the whole game Chelsea Chelsea are terrible but they didn't even I mean you really didn't even have to go get out of second gear for them to to even even beat us I mean um so yeah you guys more banging for them 15 in a row at, at Villa Park why not make it 16 and why not stuff the bottom of the league even more um before we get out of here, I have one hard hitting question, and all the, the viewers know this. Um, match day, what is your favorite pre match beverage? What is your go to match beverage on match day? I'd, I, I, I drink IPA, so I'd probably say I'm having a solid IPA. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's my go to drink, really. Yeah, good deal. Good deal. Uh, well, Luke. T- Tell everybody that's watching where we can find Up the Villa on the social medias, uh, your podcasts, Twitter, whatever. Yes, yeah, so we're on we're in, on YouTube. We're an Aston Villa fan channel, um, and we do go in depth on the opposition teams as well. So you'll be on our channel doing an opposition preview. I'll go in depth on Sheffield United tactically. We'll we'll have a look at how you play, etc. So stick around for our match preview, predicted lineups, etc. So. Uh, yeah, we're on YouTube, Up the Villa podcast. Yeah, so uh, you'll have to give them a, a view. Uh, yeah, as yours truly will be on there talking about how bad United are. Um, all right, that d- will do it. Uh, we'll wrap this one up. If you haven't done so, follow us on YouTube. I don't know how you're watching this. If you're not on YouTube, subscribe. You Red Hat for Sheffield on X slash Twitter at Red Sheffield. Um, and until Friday, when we have another inevitable loss. I will leave you this up the blades.